I want to thank you all for being here today. Uh, my name is Ed Lozowska. I'm a faculty member at the University of Washington in Computer Science and Engineering and chair of the Computing Community Consortium, which has uh, worked with a number of other folks to bring this meeting together today. And I want to thank all of you for being here with us. Uh, this is what I hope will be a really invigorating day, uh, looking at computing research that has changed the world and extracting some patterns to move forward. I'm going to give you just a brief introduction and then turn you over to our technical program for the day, which uh, again, I think will be really invigorating. And I again want to thank all of you for joining us here today. My message is a real simple one. First of all, computing has absolutely changed the world. Everybody knows it. Uh, computing has changed the world through uh, its own advances in our field that have changed the way we live, the way we work, the way we recreate, the way we communicate and learn. Uh, advances in computing also drive advances in nearly all other fields, and you hear lots about that today. But the truth is that we are empowering advances in all other fields. And finally, this particular year and this particular month is not perhaps an opportune time to talk about the economy, but if you look over the past decade or two decades, the fact is that advances in computing have really powered America's economy and the world's economy. And it's not just the computing industry, it's productivity increases in all other fields that are empowered by changing business processes and government processes and education processes to take advantage of information technology. Here's an article from the New York Times earlier this month, March 7th. Uh, and this is a survey that's no more authoritative than any other survey, but it's uh, a survey uh, of a set of faculty members at the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania of the top innovations of the past 30 years, life changers, they were called. So I simply cite this because it's the source other than myself for the impact of computing. And here are the 20 life changers that these faculty members at the Wharton School cited in their survey. And let's just go down the list. The internet and broadband, the personal computer and laptop computers, email, microprocessors, office software, open source software, e-commerce and auctions, media file compression, internet and social networking. Okay. Half of them are core computing research advances, even without reaching out to claim a significant portion of mobile phones, which are just computing devices. Something we'll talk about later today is that more than 98% of microprocessors are in devices that you don't think of as computers. They're not the computer on your desk. They are your DVD player, your CD player, your mobile phone, all of the devices that make your life better. GPS devices, again, satellite systems, but a huge amount of information technology for direction finding. I don't know how I would navigate my way around this city or any other city without a GPS. Uh, again, significant contributions to DNA testing and sequencing and to magnetic resonance imaging and so on down the list. So this is the way in which computing is changing the world and is changing our lives. And I'd like you to imagine spending a day without information technology. That's a day, of course, without the internet and everything that the internet enables. It's a day also without diagnostic medical imaging. It's a day during which automobiles don't have electronic ignition or anti-lock brakes or electronic stability control. It's a day in which you don't have digital media. Now, sometimes I think being without cell phones would be a blessing, but high definition television, MP3 audio, DVD, computer animation, video games, all of these would go away if we didn't have information technology for a day. It's a day in which aircraft couldn't fly because they rely on computer-based air traffic control systems. Travelers had to navigate around without GPS. Weather forecasters didn't have models. Factory automation didn't work. No electronic funds transfers. The military lacked technological supremacy. This is what we referred to in a recent National Academies report as the day the Earth stood still. Right? Our entire life functions and functions better, usually, because of information technology. And that's really the message. Research has built the foundation, and you'll see a lot of examples today. There's a sequence going back 20 years of National Academy studies of how innovation takes place in the information technology uh, uh, field. And uh, the basic message there is that every one of the billion dollar sectors of today's information technology industry can trace its origins back to federally funded research programs. Right? So it's a complex ecology that involves the federal government, business and industry, 
and the university sector in driving this forward. It's not a simple linear pipeline by any stretch of the imagination. It's a very complex ecology, but the federally funded research programs play a really fundamental role, and this has been shown again and again and again. And again, you will see examples today. Finally, the future is absolutely full of opportunity, and that's what a lot of today will be about. We're gonna hear about recent advances and about potential advances, whether it's creating the future of networking, whether it's driving advances in all other fields of science and engineering, and we'll have a whole session on that today, revolutionizing transportation, information systems that make uh, public transit more available and that increase the utilization and efficiency of private transportation. Personalized education, perhaps the most important thing that we could tackle. Make education technology pay off with teachers and parents and students to help achieve uh, student performance, improve student performance by personalizing education to the learning patterns and knowledge base of particular students. The smart grid, personalized medicine, on down the list, all of these are national priorities in which advances in com computing play a role and in which we're committed to making contributions over the next decade. So here's what we'll do today. First, we're gonna hear in a bunch of areas of our field about game-changing advances in computing and recent ones, ones over the past 10 or 20 years. We're gonna hear about advances that are on the horizon from each of these panels. What's in the labs today that we can expect to have impact? But I have to say that our ability to, pr to predict which advances in our field are gonna have impact is notoriously weak. When you try and look forward, it's very hard to tell what the big hits are gonna be, particularly because so often advances are a synthesis, an engineering combination of many things that have been achieved. We'll try and extract lessons that talk about how to move the field forward even more effectively in the future. And finally, we'll have a closing session that has some synthesis of the entire day, a synthesis of the recent advances, the forthcoming opportunities, and the patterns that we can extract, and some demonstrations. So that will be in an adjacent building at the end of the day, and we hope you'll join us for that. So let me just give you a quick overview of the day's program. The first session is going to be about the internet and the World Wide Web. That's a, a pretty obvious. You use it many times every day in your own lives. Uh, it's interesting to me to think that just five or ten years ago, we used to laboriously file information where we could then manually find it. And today, we just search for it. Whether it's Google or Live Search or Yahoo, Google has uh, told us they don't want to be used as a verb today, and that's <laughs> an important stricture, but the, the fact is that we simply search for information. I spend no time sticking things into folders anymore so that I can find them, whether on my computer desktop or uh, on the web. It used to be that my computer looked a little bit like my office, little semi-organized stacks everywhere, and I would spend half my time rummaging through it, and now I just type a few words into a web browser and up comes what I was looking for. And this is a synthesis of all kinds of technologies, and you'll hear about those technologies, whether it's scalable systems or search or machine learning or a variety of technologies that come together to make this game changer possible. Finally, we'll hear about the use of the internet for human computation. The second session talks about the broad foundations of our field. There are a large number of individuals in the field who are not tackling specific societal challenges, but rather are driving forward the base advances in the field of computing that everyone draws upon to make progress. Whether those are the algorithms that allow us to build large-scale, reliable, distributed systems in a totally different way than we did just five years ago, or machine learning that helps us detect credit card fraud. Uh, I have to say we need some machine learning improvement. My credit card transaction got denied last night and Andy Van Dam had to buy dinner for our group. <laughs> Turns out I'm in Washington, D.C. My wife is in Toronto. We both live in Seattle. and. Uh, Visa decided that something was going on. So. <laughs> um, so machine learning has just made enormous contributions. And again, we'll hear about social networks and sort of viewing the world as an enormous societal network. Then we'll have a session on the transformation of the sciences via computation. There's a second great revolution in the sciences going on. The first was computational science, large-scale simulation. 
The second is using networks of sensors to accumulate vast amounts of data for semi-automated analysis. So these days, it's about the data. And finally, we'll hear about ubiquitous computing. Again, the fact that 98% of the microprocessors are not in things that you think of as computing. They're in environmental sensor networks. They're in entertainment. Think about photography. Think about how you took or didn't bother to take family photos or vacation photos a decade ago and how you manage those photos, take those photos and share those photos today. It's a total revolution and it's taken place in photography, in audio, now in print media, in video, and it's all information technology. And finally, robotics in our lives everywhere. We'll have an evaluation session, a discussion among all of the panelists, and then we'll have a synthesis at the end. So I hope you'll be with us for the entire day. I want to thank you very much for being here. I want to tell you about the origins of this meeting very briefly. As I mentioned, there's a long history of understanding the IT innovation ecosystem. We had discussions with the National Science Foundation about doing an event like this. An interesting thing we did was to get broad input via blogs and wikis from the computing research community. We asked all the members of the computing research community, what do you think are the game changers that have taken place over the past 20 years? That information was sifted through by a program committee chaired by Dan Reed, who's here today, Andy Van Dam, who's here today, was also a member of the program committee, and then members of the Computing Community Consortium Council selected the final program. I want to thank all six of our congressional co-sponsors, uh, the general chairs, Greg Andrews and Dave Cayley, the session leaders and discussion moderators, who you'll see lots of today, uh, Susan Graham and Peter Lee, the Computing Research Association, under whose auspices we do our work, and finally, the program committee, speakers, and demonstrators. So thanks to all of you. Have a great day, and I think we're all going to learn a lot.